Do you see that down there on the red suitcase? Some kind of animal. What is that? seen money saver that since moving here is we haven't been since moving here we haven't been to a single coffee shop anywhere else and that's a lie you went yesterday most mornings I get up at, at 6 a.m. but today I just I woke up at that time and then I went right back to sleep whenever I don't get up at 6 a.m. Uh, Max our, our boy cat will start meowing and, and screaming, basically throwing a temper tantrum until I get up, because he, he's he's on a schedule, and uh, there's a lot of commonalities between me and, and that cat. All that to be said, I'm getting a late start today. It's totally fine. They're a long way from home. Am I the only one that says that when they see a license plate? This, or is that, just, is that just me? They're a long way from home. the only one whenever I'm at one of these things I just I make a I make a beat with it <laughs> when you're making a video either for yourself or for somebody else there's about a million things that, that go into it but there's one thing that will keep your audience around or cause them to to get bored and stop watching and it's something you don't think about until you're much further along in your your filmmaking career also, they have Segway tours that go on year-round sometimes. It's a group of four like that, or sometimes it's a group of, um, of 20 just going down the street all in a line with helmets on. The, the thing that's going to keep your, your viewers entertained and engaged with your content is going to be the pace. And pace is basically going to be the rhythm or the cadence of, of your video. If the pace is too slow, then it gets really boring. If the pace is too fast, it gets too stressful, and both of them, stressful or boring, your, your viewers are going to stop watching and they're going to tune out. And the pace can look different for pretty much every video. It literally depends on the project. If you watch a video and it's one clip of you talking and then three shots, and then another clip of you talking and three more shots of B-roll, that can be very exhausting. It'll give you the, the sense of just, just get to the point, especially if it's an educational video. Typically what I do, I'll take three or four clips of me talking and group those together, one cohesive idea or unit. And then when I feel like that scene or that, that idea has been properly shared, then I'll go to a section of B-roll, transitioning me to another like scene or section of, of the video. And sometimes this is done while I'm shooting, like just now the scenes that you just saw were all shot consecutively. There was no B-roll shot whatsoever. And sometimes it's very sporadic and I'm having to drag things around in Premiere uh, on, on the timeline. But for me, that, that typically works, works best and that way I'm able to manipulate the pace and if it needs to shorten or be lengthened, then I, I can do that after the fact. And I mean, there's a million other things that go into making a good video, but if you can get pace correct, it'll have, I think, the biggest impact on if your video is good, good or, or, or bad. Okay, now I'm going into a, a B-roll sequence of me on my walk. Halfway through these walks, I get kind of bored, and uh, I cycle through people to call. And if I can't do that, then I'll just turn an audio book on. Some kind of a uh, live sound guitar-ish, Nashville-ish thingy going on. All right. Grouping them together is going to be a fluid thing. It just—it really depends on the specific scene and the specific video, uh, but. Like I said, that's typically what I do. I think I'm gonna go home now. Uh, starting to get a little sweaty and it's supposed to rain, maybe. 